there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2002 crime drama Paid in Full. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Shine for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Paid in Full is one of those films that, over the years, it's gotten quite a cult following, but it, it did not do well initially. When it came out in 2002, it was lost in the shuffle, didn't do well financially or critically, cost like $7 million, only made $3 million in the box office. Critics weren't that enthusiastic or that impressed by it, and... It's a film that really got its uh, um, big uh, marks and its accolades uh, many, many years later on home video. And I, that's how I remember first seeing the film. I saw it on, uh, I think it was like DVD or VHS. My, my dad rented it and we watched it one night. And I remember it not being too bad. I, I wouldn't say it was one of my personal favorites. But I, I thought it was pretty solid for what it was. And after revisiting it again after all this time, I feel a similar way about it. Like, I think that, no, it's not a masterpiece. I don't think it's a straight up classic like some of the other films in the genre. I think there are better films in the genre than Paid in Full that I like more. But I still thought it was a solid film. Uh, I think it could have been better if it was closer to the true story that it's based on, but I, I still like the movie. It's directed by Charles Stone III, and honestly, I think this is his best work as a director to this day. Before this, his directorial debut was Drumline, uh, and then after this, he did a lot of other sort of sports stuff like uh, Mr. 3000, Uncle Drew, The Underdogs... He did some other stuff in between, uh, like the the TLC story, uh, TV movie, uh, Stepsisters, uh, which is a da dance comedy film that was a Netflix movie, um, Lila and Eve, which I don't remember. It's some film with Viola Davis and Jennifer Lopez, apparently. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say this was his, um, biggest highlight as a director. It really showed that he had some, some skills, definitely had some, uh, um, uh, some tricks and, and talents of the trade in his bag, so to speak. Uh, and there's some really nice looking shots in this, whether they're establishing shots or sequences that are supposed to uh, create a certain sense of emotion or or uh, a vibe. Uh, there are some scenes that are genuinely full of tension because of how he utilized the camera or scenes that uh, emphasize a, a lot of uh, intense emotions. Uh, and I, yeah, I feel that for the most part, it was a really consistently solid film from a directorial standpoint. Good uses of angles, good uh, variety of different perspectives and different uh, camera techniques. It wasn't a film that looked like it was super cheap. It definitely looked like it had a very cinematic uh, uh, feel to it. Didn't look like a TV movie, at least not to me personally. And yeah, I thought it was it was a well-directed film. The screenplay by Matthew Kerlinick, uh, Thulani Davis, and Ozzy Faison. It's fine. I would say it's pretty serviceable, but it could have been better. The The true story of the three uh, men in Harlem who uh, started a drug empire is a lot more compelling than what you have here. They didn't tell the full story, and they also made things up. For instance, uh, the character played by um, the actor uh, Wood Harris, Ace, he did not snitch on Rico. Like, that never happened. There was no, I'm going to snitch on Rico to the feds to get revenge. 
didn't happen that was made up for the film but there were stuff that did occur in reality like sadly what uh, what happened to sonny the the kidnapping of sonny by his uncle uh that actually happened and so did uh, uh everything that that uh um sonny went through ultimately before his death so that's really uh messed up and there's other stuff too that was just kind of just thrown in there like the rant at the end about how today's uh youth they think they're tough and they're gangsters but it's all show and that was completely shoehorned in there and that lack of focus sometimes is why this film doesn't live up to its full potential when it comes to its story it's got this weird structure where it starts out with uh ace and mitch and rico having fun and uh shooting the shit and eating chinese food and making bets and just having a good time and that isn't happening in real time apparently it's something that happens well i guess it actually is it's happening in 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 so pseudo real time I sound like I'm confused talking about it because it is kind of confusing because there's a certain point in the film where I think like 50 minutes in, that's when you catch up to the scene that opened the film. I don't know about uh, uh, structures like this when it comes to the plot. I prefer a more straightforward kind of thing, especially something that's based in a true story. Like just start with the, the beginning of the empire. Uh, just start establishing characters. Why do we need to start with something that happens really, really later on in this overall story between these characters? It just makes the 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 pacing feel a little too uh, uh, blocky. Isn't the right word, but it it, uh, it just affects the pacing. It makes things not flow as well as they possibly could. Because when you eventually do get to the stuff involving Ace working at the laundromat and the scene with Calvin where he's trying to get him to join the, the drug dealing game and Ace decides to pass on that, but he has a friend of his named Mitch who's really deep into it and then through some series of circumstances, Ace decides to start dealing drugs himself. Calvin winds up getting arrested and uh, Mitch is out, out of the picture because he and his uh, ga fellow gang members decided to take uh, uh, revenge on this one guy uh, in a rival gang and they shot him to death. And then it led to Mitch going to prison so there's this opportunity now for Ace to fill the shoes uh, or to come in and pick up where these other guys left off and make a lot of money. And he, 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 earlier he encountered this guy named Lulu, Lulu, who was a customer of his for the laundromat. He turns out to be a drug dealer. They make a deal together and uh, Ace starts selling cocaine. And he marks it down to the lowest price. So he essentially cuts out a lot of the competitors and he makes a lot of money in the process. He starts getting uh, more power. He rises up in the ranks, but he's the type of uh, drug dealer who's shy and really, yeah, he likes the money and he likes the cars and he likes the women and likes all this stuff. But he doesn't want to want to be as flashy as some other uh, people. And he also wants to give back to the community. And it's one of those things where it's kind of funny how the script inserts certain uh, elements of pop culture, like Scarface. There's even a, a line of dialogue from the narration of Ace where he says, like, I'm all alone, just like Scarface. 
because he went and saw Scarface at a movie theater. And you actually see scenes from the film in the movie, which I thought was pretty cool. This is no Scarface, but it was it was fun to it was fun to see Scarface uh, in a movie and see people watching the film and reacting to it within the context of of a film's uh, plot. Now he becomes this drug dealer, but he wants to do on the straight and narrow, despite you know the fact that he's doing illegal stuff. But he wants to, he wants to be an honest drug dealer, so to speak. Uh, and that only works for a little bit because he brings in this guy named Rico, who's a hothead and is flashing guns and making sex tapes and just being obnoxious and just loud and flashy and that's the complete opposite of what he's trying to do tries to get him to calm down he isn't having any of it uh calvin gets out of prison he then wants it back in on his turf and this leads to some retaliation because um ace is like nah this is my block now calvin doesn't like that so calvin is the one that ultimately shoots up uh ace and sends him to the hospital which is one of the earlier scenes in the film that kind of opens things up i will say this even though i'm not a fan of the way that things are structured in terms of the pacing of the different aspects of the film's plots and the character development i do think it's a really stark and interesting transition from uh the early scenes when he gets gunned down or it seems like he uh uh is left for dead at his apartment and then he winds up in the hospital to then him flashing back to how it all began i kind of liked that i i just wish that it maybe it started out with that or something a little bit different than what they did with just the three guys just hanging out. It just felt like a kind of a weird way to open the film. Um, it, it's almost like you change the channel and now you're watching the movie like 45 minutes in. So, but that's just, that's just me personally, but he gets gunned down. You see what happens in that whole, uh, um, horrifying sequence is a genuinely horrifying scene because of just the the way that it's set up and how brutal it is like calvin he and he and his other uh gang members they not only shoot up ace but they kill his mother and his sister in cold blood uh execution style and that that's that's just horrific and after that, though, the the script just starts to kind of, I wouldn't say completely fizzle out because you get the stuff with Sonny and he gets kidnapped and uh, and Mitch is trying to find him. So that creates some some uh, genuine moments of uh, drama and and suspense. And you really do care about what's happening because you want Sonny to get uh, saved. So the whole race against time to try to save Sonny is effective, but it doesn't last long because then, you know, Mitch winds up getting gunned down by Rico. And then it's just this, we got to wrap things up. Uh, let's have Rico get turned into the feds. Uh, and then we're going to focus on ACE for a little bit. He's going to retire from the game. Then we're going to flash forward to modern day and have his rant about uh, um, current uh, modern rappers for the time, or 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 uh, gangsters, so to speak, compared to the old head, you know, because to, to the old uh, guard, and that that was just, like I said, that was just kind of forced. But yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag near the end, I have to be honest. Like, the whole stuff with Rico betraying Mitch, like, that's so predictable. I know it actually happened in real life, but it's still something that's very predictable and isn't really shocking in the slightest. The stuff involving Sonny, uh, uh, Sonny if I can speak 
properly. Sorry, I kind of flubbed my words there because it's honestly such a uh, awful and and j just genuinely upsetting uh, real story about Sonny and and what his uncle ultimately did to him. Um, because he was angry and mad, just awful, all, all the way around. But yeah, the stuff with Sonny and, and the uncle and, and his involvement with, with Sonny's uh, uh, murder and, and kidnapping. It's definitely something that adds a lot of extra weight to things. And so does uh, completely improvised scenes, like the scene in the car with Mitch and Ace where... Mitch, he uh, has this breakdown because it's all starting to really come to a head about the reality of things and what's going on with Sonny and what's going on with with the empire that he's helped build with Ace and Rico and it's starting to fall apart. And this scene is just so powerful. It's such a strong scene, and it, it was completely improvised by Mitch, by the actor who played Mitch, Mackay Pfeiffer. Like, Mackay Pfeiffer is the one that just decided, hey, I think Mitch needs a little bit more depth. He needs a little bit more to his character. I think this would be a great addition to the to the script and, and to the film, and it definitely was. It's one of the major highlights of the film to me. It's a big reason why I think this film has any sort of lasting, enduring power is because of that scene where Mitch is showing his vulnerability. Uh, he's crying. He's showing that he's got some genuine emotions that he's grappling with. And then the transition uh, from just sadness and angst to just pure anger and talking about like, you know, if anyone looks at me wrong, I, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kill him. It is something that, that really does stick with you. And the fact that that that's like one of the last scenes you see of, of that character is also another powerful thing. I mean, even the, some of the other scenes just with Mitch and Ace, just the way that things are written it feels like a very genuine friendship between the two when it comes to the dialogue. Uh, and even prior to the scene in the car, there's another strong scene where Mitch is talking to Ace and he's talking about how you know he, he likes this life and he doesn't want to stop. He doesn't want to leave it behind because of, the, of all the things that, that he gets from it. Uh, all the perks that he doesn't get from anything else in his life and there are moments in this where there's some real heart and there's some real soul and there's characters who are just being real with with the audience and with with each other and i think that's really where the strength of paid in full is it's with the with the the heart and the soul of these characters are they drug dealers? Yeah, they're drug dealers and they're selling drugs and the drugs are doing a lot of damage to people. But you get this sense that compared to some of these other drug dealers that would come into play or come into power after uh, uh, dealers like this, they had a certain uh, humanity to them. They weren't completely soulless and they weren't completely all about the money and all about the power and all about the, the fame. Like that was a part of it for sure, because, Hey, you know, money uh, is something that is very desirable for pretty much anybody, you know, the opportunity to make more money, to make more cash. Uh, and also to, to get all these other things that come from come with it, but it didn't seem like it was a power thing for for some of these people, especially for Ace. Like it, was, it didn't seem like he really was all about being a drug kingpin. He did it because he wanted the money and he wanted uh, you know, the 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 popularity. He wanted uh, that security, but it didn't really seem like he did it because oh, I want to be you know the big man on the block. They didn't even seem like that's really. His motivation and so 
the contrast between him and Rico or him and Mitch or Calvin was definitely strong. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those screenplays where it's not as strong as it could be. The love story angle, it's sweet and charming between Ace and and Keisha, but it doesn't really go that far. Like as soon as she becomes pregnant and I think they get engaged, it just that character just seems to disappear for a good chunk of the movie. It's never really mentioned again, except for that one scene where she reveals what happened to Mitch. Um the stuff with Lulu, like that character was pretty much a throwaway guy character. Like he dies at some point and you never really feel anything because you never really got to know the guy that well. Uh, I think the script could have done a better job with that character. Like, can we get to know this character a little bit more? Um, and Rico, the way that he was written was just so over the top that it was almost unbelievable to me. Like, I don't quite know if that was actually how this guy was in reality. Maybe, maybe he was this flashy, but it did. That felt like something that was more of a, Hey, this is something that's popular in a lot of rap videos in the two thousands. Let's, let's make him act this way. It seemed like something that was just out of place. You're like, okay, is this from 1986 or 87 or is this something from 2002? Cause that, that's the kind of vibe that I got from a lot of the scenes with, with Rico. But yeah, it's one of those films where, like I said, the script, it's not awful. It's not particularly terrible, but it's also not a, as uh, good as it could be. And I, I think there's a lot of stuff that's left out when it comes to the real story of these characters. And because of that, there's a lot of moments in the film where it does feel like it's kind of going through the motions a little bit when it comes to the story. And I can see what some people might find it to be a little lacking because of that. It doesn't really have a lot of memorable action in it. It's not really trying to be an action film, but even in comparison to something like New Jack City or some of these other films that deal with uh, drug dealers in uh, the city, it, it doesn't really have any sort of memorable or exciting moments of action or gunplay. So there's not moments like that to kind of break up the monotony. And it, it, it's just one of those screenplays where the strength of it is in the characters. And it's not necessarily in a lot of the other elements. So it's a very character-driven, character-fueled film. And at times that really does carry it. But there's other times where they're not able to effectively bring the movie uh, uh, to its full potential. The cast, though, they're doing the best they can. I, I think it's a good cast. Wood Harris as Ace, the lead. I thought he had a good amount of range in this film. I, I, I thought it was a, a, a pretty um, good performance overall by Wood Harris. I thought he was charismatic enough, at least to me personally. Uh, and he effectively portrayed the different aspects of the character. The shyness, the reservedness, the the pure nature of the character where the guy wanted to do well and wanted to do things on the straight and narrow, but it wasn't getting the bills paid and it wasn't getting enough money in his pocket. So he resisted temptation for so long, but then eventually it was too enticing for him to refuse it and he had an opportunity that, that fell right into his lap and so he took the took the chance and dealt with the consequences of that and i feel that wood harris really did showcase the the impact that this choice had on on ace's life mckay pfeiffer i thought he was i thought he was magnificent i thought he was really good i thought out of all the performers in this i thought he was the biggest standout as mitch uh especially when it comes to that uh now iconic scene in the car where he has his breakdown uh cameron is rico he, he was having fun with the role but I, I i didn't necessarily 
buy it in comparison to the the main two leads. I could see why some people would be more drawn to his performance because it's more flashy, but to me it was just more over the top and and at times kind of annoying compared to the first two, which would be you know uh, Ace and Mitch. And I know some people would th- think that Ace is too withdrawn or he's too uh, morose, but I I I like that. It was a nice change of pace when it comes to the the typical kind of characters that you see in these kind of films, especially a lead. Rico was he just seemed like a loud, flashy uh rap stereotype, you know, from like a two thousands music video. That's really what he what he came across as. And Cameron is a rapper, so it it that's kind of what he he is in reality. And so a lot of his act in this wasn't really him acting. It was just him being this this rapper, this larger than life rapper. Uh, I also never bought him as an intimidating presence. So I think that's another problem. He's supposed to be like the muscle and the intimidator. And it, it never really clicked for me. I think maybe it's because of the way he was written. He was just a little too jokey. But at the same time... I don't think Cameron is that great of an actor either. So it's just one of those performances where it's fine, but I think it could have been better with, with a, with a actual actor instead of just a a rapper in that role. But that's just me personally. Uh, Kevin Carroll is Calvin looking like Stephen A. Smith from, from ESPN or first take. Uh, he was, he was, uh, an effective, uh, uh, antagonist. Uh, you definitely hate, didn't like the guy. You wanted to see him get his comeuppance. Asai Morales, it's nice to see him, but he's got a nothing role. He's barely in the film at all. I mean, one of the scenes I remember with him in, he just randomly throws his pants at Ace and that's it. Like, there's, there's nothing to this performance. Like, man, he threw his pants really well. Oscar worthy uh pants throwing uh by Asai As- Morales and in in Baden Full. Uh Shy McBride, uh, he did a good job playing the the f- kind of father figure, the uh, the the boss at the laundromat. Uh the rest of the cast is fine too, like Remo Green is Sonny, Cynthia Martell's is Dora, Elise Neal is June, Regina Hall from Scary movie and stuff like that is Keisha. I also want to mention, yeah, Ron Cephas Jones is Ice, uh, uh, based on uh, Rich's uncle, uh, Apple. Uh, Dougie Fresh plays himself in one scene. Now, the film also features some cinematography by Paul Sarasi edited by Bill Pankow and Patricia Bowers. The cinematography for the kind of film that it is, it's fine, but it's not anything really uh flashy or really fantastic. It just it's just kind of there. The 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 movie's also narrated by Wood Harris and compared to some of the narration I've heard in other movies like Belly for instance, um uh Woods Woods a better narrator than some of the other narrators that I've heard in these kind of films. Uh, and when it comes to like the editing, for instance, I think the duo of Bill Pankow and Patricia Bowers, I thought they did some really good work. Uh, there's some really great edits in this and some really uh, uh, high quality transition shots. The music by Vernon Reed and F- uh, Frank Fitzpatrick, kind of generic, kind of typical. Uh, the, the, the bigger standout music wise is the the rap songs, the the tracks that were actually uh, utilized in the film uh, that were made for the movie. Some of them though are a little weird. Like there these bits where it seems like there's this off screen DJ who's just narrating certain scenes happening. I don't know about that. That's a really puzzling uh, choice for the film. But it's like 98 minutes and it goes by pretty quick. I think there's enough engagement with the characters and with the plot, despite it being familiar when it comes to the rise and the fall of a of a drug empire. 
it's a film that I I would recommend if you like these kind of films for sure. And it's a movie that I, I did ultimately like. It's not a film though that I would say is great. And it's not a movie that I would probably watch over and over again. It's not one of my personal favorites of this genre, but I still liked the film. I thought it was, I thought it was good. I thought it was one of those above average, uh, decent, uh, uh, solid enough, uh, films. But anyway, that's my thoughts on paid in full. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. See ya.